I really hope this isn't another shit show. The two campaigns and the commission on presidential because debates have agreed to the ground rules for tonight. That first I debate was a giant dumpster fire. And it was embarrassing. Yes, soccer. Hello, and welcome back to a Traveling Knitter podcast. I'm your host, Steph, and it is October 12th, 2020. We are entering spooky season. We're entering the holidays, like all caps, and COVID is still among us. Who would have thought? I don't think many of us back in March in the United States. I'm gonna drink some water. Isn't this cool? It says Rampion, Captain is King. This is um, from the Lunar Chronicles. I subscribe to a very expensive book box called Illumicrate. It comes from the UK and you get a special edition book and then like bookish goodies. I will be honest, I love it for what it is, but if I wasn't such a book lover, I would be a little disappointed because the shipping has been terrible. Well, at no fault of theirs, the items, the items for the box keep getting delayed. So my very first box was a an August box and I got it at the end of September and then the September box I got last week, so I got it in October. Um, there was an item missing, which was this. This item was missing from the August box, and then when it arrived, it's actually broken. There's a there's a crack on the lid. I don't I don't think you're gonna be able to see it, but basically, if I were, it's like in there just right so that it's not coming off, but it's basically, there's a, like a half, like here's the bottom and then it kind of, I don't know, does that make sense? Basically the, the lid is cracked. So if I'm not careful, it will, I'll, I'll break it completely off and then I won't be able to, um, it won't stay securely on. So they are gonna replace it, but I don't know, that's two for two and the box, I'll be transparent. It's, I think I spent a hundred, maybe 150, $160 on this, this box set. So there's three boxes. Shipping is really what gets you. Um, I think shipping was $15 for each box. Um, but you do get a special edition book. The book is signed. Um, I'm so excited for both of the books and I'm really excited for this month, which I don't know if I'm going to get it in October, if I'm going to get it in November, um, but it's V.E. Schwab's new book. So that really has me debating, do I want to renew it um, or do I buy yarn? You know, those are my two pretty expensive hobbies is book buying and yarn. But anyway. Um, let's just talk about knitting, um, five minutes in and you're, well, depending on the montage at the beginning, you could be here already super long, but anyway, I do have a completed object. Um, I do need to weave in some of the ends, but I have woven in all, mm, the I've woven in almost all of them. <gasps> it's a freaking sweater! Okay, it is coming off very orange on camera. Um, it's dark in here, unfortunately. I do have one studio light on, but it's still kind of dark in here. So this is not the color. It is more yellow. It's like a golden yellow. Wow, that's like really orange, unfortunately. Oh well, you can kind of see. So this was a test knit 
for Making Stories issue five. The sweater turned out beautiful. The neckline is just so good. It's so good. I love how it's kind of square back here. So you essentially pick up and do an I cord. Um, the pattern has you do it in, there's two size needles, small, large. It has you do it in the large. I did mine in a in-between size. So um, I knit this, the body is knit on fours and then the ribbing is on size two for me personally. So I knit the I cord on a three. The modification I did was I knit about three inches longer in the body because the way the body was hitting me, it just wasn't good. Like it looked like I was trying to make it cropped, but was too long or it looked like it shrank. So it should have been longer, but it was, yeah. So I have a longer torso. Um, I would never have really thought about that until I was looking at the Soldotna and um, the Soldotna looks extremely cropped. Like if I lift my arms up, you can see below my bra. Like you can see my bra uh, if I'm wearing one. So um, I guess, and I did lengthen that and I hit gauge. I hit gauge on this as well. Something else, um, I realized that I didn't do the lace pattern correctly, but you know what? I'm not undoing it because I think it looks fine. Essentially, I did not knit enough of the like twisted stitches right here. It should be longer, but you know what? It's fine. It worked out fine. I really like this. It fits very well. I have not blocked it yet, so that is what I'm gonna do. I just wanted to put it, show it on the podcast, take pictures before I blocked it because it would take, you know, a couple days for this to dry. So, really like this. It was very easy once. Probably the most complicated part was the shoulder construction because I had never, I'd never done something like that before. But now that I've done it, I understand what you're doing. So it makes sense and it's not difficult. Um, the, for the test knit wise, I did have some issues with the cuff because um, the instructions were incorrect and it ended up taking over three weeks to get corrected instructions because um, the first set of instructions were still not right. So that was a bit of a bummer because I mean, three weeks to do that. So anyway, I kind of put this on pause because of that. And then I had to like stress knit to finish it. Um, but yeah, I really like it. I would, I would test knit for making stories again, because I do like the patterns that they curate. Um, I'm not so into the forums. Um, I did join a Discord forum for something else, and I, I I liked the Discord because it was easy to use on my phone. Um, the forum that was for making stories, it it was really annoying. It wouldn't keep me logged in, so I'd constantly have to log in again. Um, the picture situation was ridiculous. Um, I, I'm pretty tech savvy, I feel like. Um, you know, I can write a little bit of SQL. So I feel like I'm more tech savvy than someone who doesn't work with computers. Um, and I just, I couldn't be bothered to do the pictures. Like that's too much work. <laughs> so yeah, um, and I don't knit at my computer. I don't really have a laptop. I only have my desktop. So it just wasn't, just wasn't conducive for me. So I didn't really participate there unless until I had an issue with the freaking sleeve or the cuff. So anyway, this was the Twisted Vines sweater by Joan Forgione or Forgione. It is for issue five, which I don't know if it's coming out in 2020 or if it's gonna be in 2021. I'm not really sure, but there's that. Oh, and it is out of Echo View Fiber Mill Ranger DK. Here is the um, 
swatch. I think this was the first swatch. This, so this is the one that's too big, but here it is. It is just beautiful. I, I recommend knitting with this yarn and I, um, I will be knitting with this again. This was really nice to knit with. And one of my favorite local yarn stores, she actually carries this. So I, I definitely, like I could see myself knitting another sweater out of this yarn. It was just so nice. And the swatch has been washed and it's soft. I mean, the yarn is soft, but yeah, really liked it. I have about 50 grams left. Um, not really sure what I'm gonna do with it. I think what would be really nice is some mittens or some gloves. So if I can get a pair of mittens out of 50 grams, then that would be awesome. That would be like a, a really nice Christmas gift. Oh, here is the yarn tag if you wanted to see that. So my next project is this sock here. So it is just a normal vanilla sock. This was a pattern that I was working on, but uh, you can't really tell, but this, this has alpaca in it. It was just too fuzzy. The pat stitching was just getting lost. So went to just a normal sock, which honestly I was kind of needing. Um, I've been in some of my meetings, I haven't needed to, you know, take notes or anything. So I didn't really have any sort of knitting pattern or knitting project that I could work on. So I cast on these socks and I have turned the heel. So I'm pretty much just working on the foot. The mini is some sort of red mini from an advent calendar. I think, I think it's from Sweet Sparrow. Whoa. Cause it doesn't have Stealina in it. So it's not Court of Thorns and Roses, but the color makes me think it is from that. But so there we go, sock. And I do have this adorable wooden owl stitch marker on here which is from the brand a needle runs through it. Is it going to focus on it? You'll just have to, to believe me. I don't have the tag for this, but like I said, it's an alpaca yarn. I got it from a friend um, when her Oma passed away, she had a bunch of yarn and this is one of those skeins. The next project is the Page of Wands cowl. It was a mystery cowl. The mystery is now over. Um, I did have to put this on hold because of knitting that sweater, but I am raring to go on this. I, I ended up printing out all the patterns because I was just kind of ready to do that. And I am on the fourth clue. So here is what it looks like. It is so crisp. It looks great on camera. I don't know what all of them are. Look at you can actually see the the contrast color on camera with the lights on. So there it is. Basically it's going to be double in size because I have finished three pages. The yarns I'm using are Jameson Shetland Spindrift in 289 gold. That's the subtle contrast color here. Then the background color is Rauma Gone Fino Gone in 4187 beige. And then the patterning is in same yarn, 425 medium red brown. I don't know if those color names are the actual colors or if that's just what the yarn shop that I was at labeled them as, um, but I do know those are the numbers at least. 
So here's where I'm at right now. This is my ooh, first skein of the contrast color. I'm definitely not going to use up the full skein. I might not even break into the third skein. This is the second skein for the main shawl. Main shawl. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Am I going to end up with two skeins of yarn? Um, and then I knew I wasn't going to be using up this. So, I don't know what else I'll use that for. Go into my scrap pile. I am keeping that in this adorable market basket. And... I really should have just used a project bag for this because it does not fit very well. It just kind of sits on top of all the yarn, but you know what? It's fine. It doesn't really go anywhere. Is is by Audrey Borrego. She is Yarn Flakes on Instagram and YouTube. She is a French pattern designer. The next project that I have is in my Fringe Supply Co. field bag. I believe this is the field bag. I purchased this when Fringe posted that they were closing shop. So I grabbed this. I still want the waxed plum. So if anyone ever sees that at a store somewhere, let me know because I was holding out to have that and I never got one. Um, this is my All the Lights, sh blah, blah, blah. All of the Lights Cardigan Jacket by Hohi Locatelli. So remember, remember when I said that I was slightly confused about the uh, Twisted Vines construction? It's the same thing for this cardigan. So I was not confused. The only thing that had me kind of tripped up. I ended up reading and looking through all of the, not all, but like as many as I could of the projects on Ravelry is because this, this isn't symmetrical. So I don't, can you tell? It's not symmetrical. The center is not the actual center. So I don't really know why it's like that. And I looked at, I tried to look at so many pictures and yeah, I mean, so many people have done this. There's test notes for it. I really don't know why it's not symmetrical. So yeah, so that's a little annoying and definitely had me stopping, but you know what? In the grand scheme of things, you're not gonna notice, but I still, I would love to know why it's not symmetrical. So I think I'll probably like make a post and just ask Hohi why it's not symmetrical. Whatever. So I'm basically, I just need to replicate this onto this side. So I have a few more rounds to go. And then I don't know what the instructions say next. I'm assuming it's picking up stitches somewhere and then knitting some more. I'm very excited to have this. Love it. I did get this dyed to order from Vogue Knitting Live last year and I ordered it for this cardigan in mind. And the yarn is the Fiber Seed Sprout Decay in the Rustic colorway. I'm very excited for this. It's probably going to take me a long time because there's a lot of cables, but I know I'm going to love this and it's my first cardigan. And I love cardigans. So I'm very excited for this. On the horizon, now that I finished that sweater, I can go back to not knitting for deadlines and I am going to be casting on two Halloween things. I'm going to be casting on my socks. So 
These are gonna be some Halloween socks and I'm gonna use this leftover gray. Um, I used this for a, um, a shawl. It was my Lisa Frank shawl that I, I bought this year and to tone it down. Um, so I'm going to use this with this. So I'm gonna do, I don't know if I'm gonna put this in the cuffs, we'll see. Um, but definitely in the heels and the toes. And there's gonna be bats. So I think this will look really awesome. And maybe depending on how much I have left over, I'll do a hat, we'll see. Because um, I use about 50 grams for socks. So then when I do contrasting, I use even less, so. That's one project. And then the next thing I'm so excited for. I saw, um, the, who's this? Tannis Gray. She came out with the Haunted Mansion cowl. It's a color cowl themed off of the Haunted Mansion, which is amazing because that is my style. Um, I actually have a, a notebook full of color work ideas and one of them was the Haunted Mansion. Um, so a little bummed that I didn't get this. <laughs> I have so many ideas. I have one for the Pirates of the Caribbean. I have one that is just like Magic Kingdom, Epcot, uh, MGM Studios, Animal Kingdom. So, you know, I don't know. There's, it's also a little copyright. But anyway, so she came out with this cowl. I bought it and I found yarn. So, yeah. Oof. Um, so this is Stitch Together Studio, and this is Dreamy DK Kit, 100% um, Superwash Merino, 500 yards. This was from lo Local Yarn Store Day 2020 called Rise Together, and it, this is a shawl set, but I was talking to the owner of that yarn store, and I had mentioned that cowl and that I wanted to do that, and she suggested this and I mean, look how fluorescent this green is. I'm pumped. I think this is gonna be amazing. I'm so excited. So I'm gonna wind this up. I don't know, maybe I'll even start it tonight. Maybe. I've got some winding to do. And it's funny cause it's like very similar, but yeah. So I guess this leads us into Smaug's Trove. I bought these two skeins of yarn and I bought this project bag. It is um, very Halloween inspired. It is uh, the Crazy Skein Co. Premium Handmade Bags for any project. Megan Bolander. Um, this one's called Mummy Explosion. Here is the tag. Nothing's gonna focus. Yeah, so I got a bag, it has this cute tassel and a progress keeper on it, which is like yarn. So very excited. Plus I got a little sticker because I purchased the local yarn store kit. Um, very excited. And I think I will knit on both of those Halloween things inside of this bag. So that's what's on the horizon or on the horizon as well as Smaug's Trove. On to the next segment, which is the spotlight. And today's spotlight is going to be a candle maker. I, um, apparently there's been this marketplace, marketplace, this street market, right at one street over from me every Tuesday and Friday until four o'clock, which explains why I didn't know about it because I work until past five, typically six or seven. Um, so I wouldn't have seen it. But the other day, I I just needed a break. I needed a break. So I blocked off my calendar for an hour and left to go get coffee. I'm not a coffee drinker. So that's saying something that I literally left to go get coffee and I stumbled upon this marketplace and there was, anytime someone is selling candles, I love candles and if they're homemade candles or what have you, I'm a fan. So, I 
bought this soy candle, which you can see I've already burned. It's amazing. This is rosemary. Uh, this is a rosemary soy candle. Ah, uh, it's so good. <sighs> yeah, it's it smells really, really good. She, it's Holistic Angie. I'll put the information on the screen. Uh, it is the Regal Candle Bar, and so she sells candles that have aromatherapy in them, and. I, I mean, I can attest the rosemary one is very good. So this guy, this was, this was $12. I believe it's eight ounces. I've already burned mine for about five, six hours. And you can kind of see what's been used. So this has a lot of hours and she was so sweet. She even, when I was, you know, I was smelling all of them with a mask on, which is really hard <laughs> to smell things wearing a mask. But she'd said, you know, after you finished burning it, just send her a message and she would explain how to like pour your own candle. Not a good business model, but like really nice. Um, so yeah, I recommend it. It was great. I'm sure she ships. And it was really nice talking to her because she said that she had moved from New York to Columbus pretty much right as the pandemic hit. Um, she had moved here for a job, but then the job, um, she, you know, she was stuck in New York. She couldn't leave. So that fell through, but she was already moving here. So I don't know. I just, I kind of, I felt, I felt for her because though not in, nearly as bad of a situation, I kind of felt like I was just starting a new job and moving at a really terrible time. So yeah, um, I really, I recommend uh, at least giving her a follow. She has some really beautiful pictures and I mean, she sells candles. Who doesn't like candles? That takes us to life. Um, what have I been doing? You might have noticed that um, I'm podcasting to you rather late. This should have gone up um, last week. Um, I just, I just, I didn't feel like it. Um, yeah, didn't feel like it. Have I done much? No, not really. Haven't done much. Um, I was trying to do Vlogtober. So I was vlogging. And then I went to create my first vlog and it's boring, guys. It's boring. I don't do anything. It's basically me at my desk working and I'll give you an update about how I'm still working. And the angle was always the same, side angle of me at my desk. I don't do anything because you know covid um i don't really have anything planned i don't know if anything's open you know if any like if there's a pumpkin patch or anything so you know i decided 2020 vlogtober is just not going to be a thing we're gonna nix it so if you're looking forward to it sorry but it was boring there wasn't really nothing you were gonna see um, this weekend I did one activity um, that was the German Village Marketplace, which was great. I bought these earrings. I've been just really into earrings. So I bought four or five pairs from different vendors. Really like them. The clay, clay aesthetic dangly earrings are coming in or are in style and I like it. Oh, and they're slightly different. That's a star or a sun and that one's a moon. Um, yeah, so we did that. Um, and I was able to scooter to it from my apartment, which was so much fun. I love those electric scooters. I love the electric scooters. It makes going places enjoyable instead of just taking an Uber, um, especially right now, taking an Uber is not 
super exciting. Um, so yeah, it was really, it was nice. Went there, went to the book loft, bought more books. I've added so many books to my collection, to my bookshelves. And if you noticed, I skipped a novel idea. I've been buying books, but not reading books. <laughs> and there's gonna be another influx of books here soon. Um, so maybe I'll do a book haul. I don't know, because then I have to deconstruct my bookshelves again because of all the books that I purchased. But yeah, I hope to have at least one book finished. I better have a book finished. I've been reading the same book for weeks now. <sighs> Whatever. Um, another thing that I've been enjoying is Pokemon. I bought Pokemon for my uh, Switch and I'm loving it. It, it's definitely, okay, hear me out. It's definitely the easiest Pokemon game that I have played because of the updates that they've done. Basically after any major battle, all of your Pokemon are healed. Um, there are constantly people standing around that will heal your Pokemon. So you don't have to go to a Poke Center. Um, yeah, there's also experience share that's turned on. I don't even think you can turn it off for your team. So all of my Pokemon are so strong so quickly because I really take the time to go catch Pokemon. So inevitably you, um, gain XP. There is, I don't, yeah, it's just, it's really easy. And I am not mad about that. You know, real life is a, is a lot of work. So I'm just enjoying video games without them being difficult. I just want to play them to enjoy them. So I've, I've been enjoying that. Um, when it comes to my Xbox, the new Xbox comes out in a month. And uh, I've been playing Sunset Overdrive. I know, I know, it's an old game. Um, I have Xbox Live Game Pass and Sunset Overdrive is one of the games that's on there. And I never beat that game back in the day. So I am playing it and I'm enjoying it. It's definitely rated M for Mature. Um, just some of the commentary and the, yeah, don't play it with kids around. Um, there's a lot of cursing and just, yeah. So, but it's, it's hilarious. It's great. It's like totally my humor. So I've been playing that. As you can see, I decorated Do I'll probably put the decorating montage in at the beginning of this episode. Um, but that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. Hopefully that wasn't too long. Um, and I really should do all of the social medias at the beginning, but I just forget. Oh. Thank you so much. Um, if you're a new viewer or an oldie, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening. Um, if you'd like to follow me on the social medias, I am a traveling knitter podcast on Instagram. We also have a Ravelry group. I don't do too much there because, meh. If you would like to follow the personal accounts, I am Lulu is crazy on Instagram and Ravelry and Goodreads. Uh, so like I said, thank you so much, guys. If you have any questions, just leave them down below. And I will talk to you guys in two weeks. Bye.